Just before eight o'clock in the morning, local time, on the 3rd of April 2024, Taiwan was hit by a magnitude 7.4 earthquake, closely followed by a series of major aftershocks. Let's examine the tectonic setting of these earthquakes. And straight away we should point out that just six years earlier, the same area had been hit by a magnitude 6.3 earthquake. Both of these events and their associated aftershocks were in close proximity to the city of Hualien on the east coast of Taiwan. So where are we tectonically? Let's just put on the earthquakes that occurred in this region since 1970, and they define a jigsaw of tectonic plates. And we can zoom in to that area. Here's Taiwan, and it lies at the junction between the Eurasian plate over in the west and the Philippine Sea plate, an area of the floor of the Pacific Ocean that lies to the east. The Philippine Sea plate and the Eurasian plate are converging. In the north, this convergence rate is just over 7 centimetres a year, and the Philippine Sea plate is diving down beneath the East China Sea. Further south around the plate boundary, and the convergence rate's faster still, but this time the floor of the South China Sea is going underneath the Philippine Sea plate. And in the middle, Taiwan is caught. The convergence rate here is between the Philippine Sea Plate directly with the Eurasian Plate at a rate of somewhere over 8 centimetres a year. So Taiwan is a collision zone. Let's just examine the distribution of earthquakes across the plate boundary. And we'll start off in the north where the Philippine Sea is going down beneath the East China Sea. And then we'll look at what's happening across Taiwan. So here's a profile. Notice the scale in kilometres, we're going to go down in Earth 400 kilometres and we're looking across at a distance of somewhere over 500 kilometres with the Philippine Sea over on the right and the Ryukyu Islands in the middle of our diagram here. And now let's add the earthquakes, colour coded for depth. And we can see there's a zone of earthquakes coming from very shallow, diving down beneath the Ryukyu Islands, defining what we call a subduction zone meaning that the floor of the Philippine Sea is diving beneath the Ryukyu Islands. This is how the convergence between the Eurasian and Philippine Sea plates is being accommodated. And we can contrast this now with the other profile running through the island of Taiwan. And this time, it's a much more complicated system. Any subduction zone is very hard to identify here. Rather, there's very broad zone of distributed continental faulting. So let's zoom in to this region. And here's the seismicity since around 1970. And it's a real mess, isn't it? It's a huge amount of earthquake activity here. So let's just consider the larger ones. These are magnitude five and higher. And we can see they're strongly concentrated on the east side of Taiwan. And it was here that the earthquakes in 2024 occurred. Taiwan then is an area of plate convergence. And particularly along the eastern margin of Taiwan, we have convergence between an arc system, form of volcanoes and so forth, that are colliding in with the Eurasian continent, seen quite clearly in this Google Earth image. So let's go down closer still and have an oblique view looking north along Taiwan. There's the Luzon Arc, our buried volcanic arc system, converging with the island of Taiwan. The backbone of the island, the central range, and this is stacked up Eurasian continental margin. It's the eastern side on the right, the coastal range, that is the collided arc system. And separating them right through the middle and heading for Hualien City is this major fault zone running along that broad valley. This is the Longitude Valley Fault. Now, here's the first puzzle. Long, straight fault zones like this, well, a global example is the San Andreas. These types of tectonic landscapes are generally thought to be typical of so-called strike-slip faults, where the wall rocks, in this case our two ranges, would be slipping sideways. Well, as we'll now see, that's not what's going on. 
Here is the earthquake fault plane solution created by the USGS. And this pattern is diagnostic of so-called thrust faulting, where we push the rocks together and they fail pushing one layer on top of another. But thrust faults generally have dips, that's inclinations, of less than 40 degrees. This particular fault plane solution for the earthquake in April 2024 implies a fault plane dipping steeply towards the east-southeast, dipping at about 58 degrees. Very steep for a thrust fault. The earthquake that struck just before 8 o'clock was, of course, followed by a series of major aftershocks, which were distributed out along the coast and in the near offshore. And the USGS created a fault plane model that looks like this. So this is a plot looking onto the fault plane as though we were offshore looking towards the west, showing a characteristic bullseye pattern with the greatest displacements in the middle. Those displacements go up to in excess of 1.25 metres on our magnitude 7 earthquake. And the fault plane itself slipped over a distance of somewhere in excess of 60 kilometres along its length. So the Longitude Valley Fault System, at least as it's behaving today, is not behaving as a strike-slip fault, but as a zone of thrust faulting. And we can put together information from other earthquakes that have occurred in the region, as Huang and Wang have done recently. And they show that all the earthquakes that they can analyse in this region pretty much are thrust faults. So a complicated array of lots of little thrust faults making up the composite Longitude Valley fault system. But why is it so straight? Why is it so simple when we look at it on satellite imagery on Google Earth? Was it once a strike slip fault zone? And now it's acting as a thrust zone. Something to check out in the future. Here is the segment that failed on the 3rd of April. Are other segments waiting to go as we go further south along this fault zone? Certainly we expect other major earthquakes, as has happened in recent years, along the fault zone as a whole. That's a convergence rate of 8 centimetres a year, accommodated by faulting in this part of Taiwan. And we can step back now and place Taiwan back in its plate tectonic setting. In this zone of active deformation in the complex web of plate boundaries in East Asia.